And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good sister into the temple, the one and only Chibi Aurelia, the... the rare example of of an of an elf who does not trigger the dwar the dwarven part of the temple <laughs> and Hello. How, how are you doing how are you doing today or tonight damn time zones uh, rather well right uh today or tonight same difference <laughs> i'm doing quite well thank you and how about yourself i am do i'm doing good um the there's been there's been a bit it's currently in that time of the year where um old man winter is the is the guy in the bar who doesn't want to leave even though it's long past closing time because he hasn't finished his yeah. one drink meanwhile you're the bartender behind the bar playing closing time hoping they get the hint and they just don't seem to care you have no idea how how overplayed that song got where i am <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it doesn't exactly help that semisonic the band responsible is full of a bunch of u of m graduates uh. <laughs> and I, I was in i around that time i was in the university air i was in the uh, university campus area um or at least at least somewhat adjacent to it so you'd hear that song a lot <laughs> nice nice <laughs> and then years later, I got my revenge by using that in the good old jukebox bombings, which is when you go to a jukebox f that you, that you find somewhere, put five or ten dollars on one song, and just watch what happens. Oh yeah, I heard a story about that with the um, Pussycat song. Mm -hmm. I've used I used to do that. I used to do that. Used to do that, or any Lionel Richie song I could find, or um, Piano Man. Nice. Especially since one of my colleagues really, really hates how my, Piano Man because he got requests for it all the damn time. <laughs> it's like it's like it, it's like guitar players in Freebird. It's a good way to p get them pissed off. Right, right. <laughs> to the point where he he actually had he actually had a Wayne's World sign saying "Absolutely no Piano Man." That is absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, yeah. I bet he could also just say, "Hey, if you if you really want to hear that song, come at this time on this day, and then you'll never want to hear it again." <laughs> no, he just he just got so sick of it. He refused to he refused to touch it. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh. I um. But the the be the better part with most of the snow being gone is my driveway is on an in is on an incline going down. So oh, no. walking d so walking on it when there's all the ice on the ground is I end up having to walk like a penguin. Oh jeez. <laughs> if I had to deal with that, I'd probably just sit down and slide. <laughs> yeah, I um. I've had a few experiences with land landing the landing the wrong way on ice. So uh, yeah, you only have to have that happen to you once before you start getting paranoid. <laughs> uh, especially especially in one case where I ended up where I ended up land. The wor the worst ice incident was the time I pulled a Van Dam. <laughs> I'm not that oh, flexible. Geez. <laughs> yeah, one, I ended up slipping. One leg went one le way, one leg went the other way, and I went down. I have to say, I don't think very many people are that flexible. <laughs> no, but everybody knew I did it because of how loud I was screaming. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I yeah. mean, I imagine there's a lot of pain involved. Yeah. <laughs> there's a reason I have a healthy respect for stuntmen. Because doing it, doing it for an extended, doing that kind of thing for an extended weekend was enough for me to say I am not cut out for that. Yeah, I could see that, you know. But <laughs> beyond beyond that, um, 
I am br I am bracing f I am bracing for the for the deluge that's going to happen come April as well as well as the fact that um I'm going to have to deal with everybody coming back to the offices around that around that time. So that's good. So mm -hmm. that's going to be an interesting bit of fun. But that but speaking of fun, that brings us to this particular experiment, I guess. Cuz when I had you on last, you had you had mentioned your interest in the role playing and characterization end of TTRPGs. Yes. And then I remembered that I had this that I had this little thing called Fought Tomb in my back pocket, and I decided, you know what? Let's put this to the test. So, okay. this is not the first time I've used Fought Tomb on the show. The general gist is that it is a tarot-themed um, deck focused on character creation, but with the character ba background um, bonds and so on, and because because of the fact that the cards themselves don't have a whole lot of text it's just the title and then the art and po and possibly some link um parts i felt it would be a very good means means of put means of seeing where we can go with with characterization with characterization prompts basically the world's okay. most complicated mad lib <laughs> okay i i'm i'm in so as much as I would have liked to be able to show the spreads, that's not something I'm able to do because I don't have the camera set up. So we're, so we're just gonna we're just going to improvise the rest of the way, which that tends to be the, that tends to be part of the GM's creed. When in doubt, make stuff up. Absolutely, that's one of my favorite parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and besides, I'm, are you familiar at all with Rule Zero? Uh, if you can't find it fast enough, it's up to you, DM. Also, just have fun. It's really all it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, the, there's a whole lot of variation on how it's written, depending on what book you're looking at. But the gist is, yeah. the rules are meant for entertainment. If the rules are getting in mm -hmm. the way of entertainment, throw the rule out. Exactly. But getting getting to Fatum, there are. Let's see one, two, three, four, fa four phases, and then a sub phase with the, with whatever card ha has links to it. The first of these is going to be, of course, character, which I'm going to be bending the rules a little bit and drawing one card for race and class. Okay. So, the race card you en you, en you ended up getting with this first character is. Undead. The class card is oh, Rogue. Okay. So the next step is. I'm already formulating thoughts. Yep. Next step <laughs> is origins and background. Essentially, where you where you hail from and what and your beginnings. Okay. So we'll start with origins. And the origin card is City. Okay. And hang on a sec. Mm -hmm. The mat. I have to. I do flatten out the mat for a bit. And the background card is soldier. Okay. Let's see. Then comes the mark of past and impetus. Um part of part of the affair mark of past is basically some significant event that happened in your past and impetus is why you became an adventurer okay so we'll start with mark of past and that is romance okay and the impetus is rivalry Okay, okay. And the last part is two bonds. Which I think itself I don't think I need to explain what a bond is supposed to entail. Hmm. 
they be just for anybody who's never... Uh, well, Maybe this is it, their first time experiencing this. Some some connection, whether it be family, friend, or a thing, what have you. I hope that wasn't a lead-in to try and make a joke about stocks. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, the first bond is Chief. Okay. And the second bond is Apprentice. Okay. Now... That covers the basic spread, but there's one final thing to cover. Certain cards will have a who, what, where, when, which is question, which is answered through a, through a set of cards attached to it. Okay. Which is which is the which is the next part that has to be answered. And it'll and the card will list which which um, card types have to be drawn for it. Okay. So, in the ki we'll start with the ro we'll start with the romance, and the tags for that are a beastkin monk. Okay. That ha a be. With the background of dragon. Okay. And a, a the event of hate. Oh no. Okay. Let's see. As for rivalry, which is which is generated in the same way. We have a centaur druid. <laughs> Once again, we return to the mystery of the druids. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm oh. With the background of naive hero and an event, an event of defeat, and okay. la lastly, the lastly determining the who regarding the chief and the apprentice. So okay. for the chief, we have a dragonborn barbarian. <laughs> Whose ba whose background is bandit? Okay. And event and event is wealth. And for the apprentice, we have a gnome cleric. <laughs> With a background of magic item wielder okay. and an event of betray. Okay. I know that was I know that was a lot, but given given all of that, what sort of what sort of character comes to mind for that for this uh, for this undead rogue that that we've created with this spread? So oh, I'm thinking that uh, our undead rogue was buddy buddy with the dragonborn barbarian because uh, he's a rogue and that guy was a bandit. Um, perhaps his friend came into wealth when he became the chief mm -hmm. and uh, offered our friend, the undead rogue, a soldier position uh, within his city. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, our 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 undead rogue coming from a city of their own understands how soldiers work and agrees but also because he is deeply in love with this uh i'm going to say uh dragonborn-esque monk mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, who for some reason hates us. And um, because she hates us, we, we're trying even harder to be a good soldier, mm -hmm. to outdo the centaur druid, who's this naive hero. And because he's the hero, he obviously gets the ladies. Um, however, we have something in our advantage, as recently he was defeated, so perhaps we might, might just be able to to get vengeance for our centaur druid uh, friendly companion uh, and kill the big beast and perhaps win that trusty love with our apprentice, the gnome cleric, who's who's really been trying to become a soldier, but she is a magic wielder and, um, you know, she was probably a part of a class of clerics and they betrayed her, so she looked for a life of adventure in the soldier area as, like, uh, a healer. In, in the infirmary, but that got boring, so she's willing to come with us to slay this beast and win our unrequited love. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. I can go. I can cert. I can certainly. Go. <laughs> uh, well, we I, we can't call it undying love because that'd be a bit. Re that'd be the redundancy department of redundant. Oh yes, yes, uh. but it can be unrequited. Mm-hmm. Which... Cause she hates us. <laughs> this is start. This is. This is start. This is starting to feel like some of the. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna make a Shakespeare joke, but the only jo But the only one that you have is Titus Andronicus, and that doesn't really work here. <laughs> it's an interesting triangle for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet. It's and yet, in spite of all that, still a better love story than Twilight. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I know it's an old meme, but um, whenever, but I will always, re I will always remember the one, t the one time I, the one time that I met, that I met Mayor at a um, book signing. One that I had no interest of going, but my but one of my siblings wanted to, and I forced my I forced my hand into be into being there as a bodyguard. Okay. And just from her expressions, I saw someone who cannot take criticism. Ah. It's, I mean, it's a hard thing to take in the first place, but yeah. Now to now to clear the to clear the board and do a bit of shuffling. Um, if you don't mind, while you're doing that, I can talk about uh, something I shared back with you when you were showing me the um, the Fatum cards. Go ahead. Which is it's something I actually bought into recently. I went to a convention near me, and there were these. Uh, decks of cards called Better Backstories, which is similar in theme, mm -hmm. and it's kind of cool because it has a D10 that you would roll for most of the cards unless they have a specific background like Stranger or Abandoned or something. Um, but they also are really cool because you can doubly use them for weather events or um, time of day, things like that. So. I love these tools, um, the Fatum cards that you're offering now and the better backstories because as a DM, I will often, like, one of the most common thing I get asked is, what's this guy's name? And uh, if I feel like if I give him a name, I have to give him a backstory. It's only fair. Um, <laughs> so I will pull out these better backstories and I will just come up with something on the fly or if... Uh, if there's something I'm feeling that's on the list, I will just go straight for that. And uh, it's made it very amusing and very fun. Um, I have... It... Oh, go, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, it definitely brings more life and uh, just reality or being able to get into the game a little bit more mm -hmm. at the sessions. Yeah, I... Um... I have a I have a entire folder that I de 
that I dedicate just to randomizers <laughs> that I have, just in case Ace. I need one. Yes. Oh. Uh, especially since... Uh, maybe it's because of the time that I would play Ars Magica, but I've... I ha I um try and fill a lot of campaigns with as many NPCs as needed. Nice. And I bring up Ars Magica because that ga because that particular game has the expectation that players are going to be handling multiple multiple characters in the same session. Yeah, yeah, it's uh it makes it useful. That's the one thing I wish I had done is pre-made some uh, randomly generated NPCs like this, and and see how they fit within the world. Well, if I ever if I ever end up running um, the Agito Arcanum pro project as a campaign, I'd pr I'm probably going to need to do that just because of its subject matter. The short version mm -hmm. of that on an earlier episode of the podcast, we myself and my co and. My colleague Zan Xanatrix, who you'll probably end up meeting eventually, um, we dis we dis we decided to because of how dis because of how Strixhaven was a disappointment, decided you know we're we'll do we'll do our own spin on the whole advent on the whole adventurers school kind of thing. Ooh, okay. Oh, but I've got I've gotten everything reshuffled and ready to go. So, first, the race and class of the of the character, and for that we have shapeshifter and sorcerer. Okay. And amusingly, the art for the shapeshifter is a werewolf, so go with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the origin is mountain. Okay. The background is pirate. Okay. The mark of past is friendship. The impetus okay. is death. Oh no, okay. The first bond is daughter, and the second bond is lover. Oh, wow, okay. So, first we'd, first we'd need to determine the daughter, and that requires a, that requires a character and, ba and background card. So the daughter, the t and the two cards for that are Artificer and Merchant. And okay. after that is the is the is the the death card has three options, and I need I'm get and I'm gonna need you to pick which which of the three, who. Where or murderer? Hmm. Uh, murderer. All right. So first, so the so the murderer is a elemental monk. With a back with a background of deity, okay, and a event 
of bankruptcy okay Let's see then it then comes friendship and that would be that would be with a orc fighter with a background of doctor and an event of betray and finally the lover which in this case is a human blood hunter because somebody somebody who okay. wanted, who was on the Kickstarter really wanted the blood hunter class and that's <laughs> with a background of monster And an event of debt. Okay. Okay. So... <laughs> um, because you said werewolf, I'm gonna go with the trope of like someone being turned into a werewolf and not necessarily born as a werewolf. All right. So we have our sorcerer, um, who was who is living in the mountains where wolves are usually found, and uh, one fateful evening they were turned into a werewolf. Um but found that they could easily shapeshift back into the humanoid form. Um, and they ended up having to leave behind their daughter, who was doing pretty well um, as a merchant in the nearby city, uh, where she has become an artificer. So... In order to protect her and not potentially infect her as well, we choose to go uh, be a pirate. And uh, that's where we come across our friend, uh, who we've known for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, possibly ask them if they can cure us, because he's a, he's a, a doctor. Um, however, uh, shortly after coming across his home... I find out that he was murdered by someone who believes he is the reason they went bankrupt. Uh, I, looking around, find uh, a human blood hunter mm -hmm. who's dealt with monsters in her past. And because she has some debt she's looking to pay, uh, she agrees to help me track down this elemental monk mm -hmm. who believes that their uh, deity can determine who's allowed to live and who's not allowed to live. Um, and thus, because he f thought this orc fighter was the source of his bankruptcy, his deity essentially granted him permission to murder him. Um, thus causing the poor orc fighter to be betrayed by potentially one of the people that he worked closely with or um, was trying to help heal. Uh, though, as we know, Scientology doesn't always work well with religion and um, the betrayal was set. That's what I got. Just curious, um, if you were to state it proper, what... What um sorceress origin would you go with? Hmm. That's a great question. Um 
was kind of thinking otherworldly influence. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Um. Probably, like divine soul or something. Lunar magic. Actually, you know what? Lunar magic uh, from the Unearth Arcana suits it pretty well because of the werewolf. Although I get the feeling this is this this particular variation would be more akin to a skin changer, someone who doesn't need a full moon in order to tr in order to change. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I could, I could see, I could see divine soul. Um, if say probably one of those two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if only because, if only because aberrant. Ma if aberrant mind, I would have, I possibly would have gone with if it weren't for the fact that that was one of those U, that was one of those UA entries that was trying to bring bring psionics into into five E in the worst way possible. Ah, because <laughs> that also yeah. that was the, that was the same batch where they tried to pitch they tried to pitch the idea of scions are just wizards who cast spells with their mind. Which went which went over about as well as farting in church. <laughs> so they ended up redoing the thing to try and make it less terrible. But mm -hmm. truth be truth be told, I think what they should have done was just cre was just create psionic classes instead of trying to make a subclass and then shoehorning it into some place it didn't belong. But, yeah. Yeah. But that's st that's still two for two, although I am noticing a tr I am noticing a tragedy pattern going about, <laughs> <laughs> which I had nothing which I have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. How many betrayals are happening? Oh, well, let's see. Let's see if the trend continues. And the, we start with the character, and well, this is a little. This is a little bit on point. Elf and druid. Oh, jeez, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> As an old man once said, "Truth is the greatest comedy." That's fair. So then we go with or then we go with origins. Origin is a heavenly plane. Okay. And background is masked guardian. So I should note that the art the art suggestion for masked guardian has more of a lucha libre flavor. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> The mark of past. Moment. Is. Rise. And. Okay. The imp and the impetus. Is. Legend. Okay. See, and then we ha then f lastly bonds. The first bond is mother, and okay. the se the second bond is master. Okay. And then it's so regarding the rise. The only the only thing that needs to be drawn with that is an event. 
as to answer the why within that within that rise. And that it and that is fame. Next I Okay. Next is answering the issue of the mother. Well, the mother is a halfling barbarian. I think I may have been adopted. <laughs> the background <laughs> of queen. Oh, okay. <laughs> The ma the master is a half elf cleric. Okay. With a with a background of Necromancer. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> and an, ev <laughs> an event of redemption. Okay. And finally, the, the legend is about a dwarf rogue. There's a combination you don't see often. Okay. With a with a background of politician. Oh no. <laughs> a ev a event of selfless sacrifice. And an origin of ancestor land. So, you're right. I think you, I think I think you were. I think this character was adopted. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, where do I begin on this one? Um, this character is uh adopted by this halfling used to be barbarian now queen perhaps she's a queen barbarian and she leads the people into battles mm -hmm. who knows we'll figure that out in a second um but because i'm full elf and she doesn't want me to know or anybody else to know rather that i am uh, a full elf and not a halfling i am, have become a masked guardian um, which brings in the, uh, the Lucha Libre mask, because it really well covers up everything. That, um, and the thing about Lucha, the thing about Luchadors is, anytime you're in public, you have the mask on. Exactly. So, in public, I am, uh, her masked guardian, <laughs> um... Although my half elf cleric master is looking for redemption because uh, she used to be a necromancer, mm -hmm. but she's she's now seeing how uh, purely raising the dead could be, you know, not ideal. <laughs> so she's looking for redemption and becoming my master, um, and helping me understand what it is to be a druid in general. Um, I, uh, recently rose to fame as this masked guardian, uh, because it was found out that, uh, perhaps my father was, was of the heavenly plane. Um, but also, uh, this heavenly plane is associated with this, uh, legendary dwarven rogue, um, who is 
it is foretold that this dwarven rogue would be the politician to bring about change through the selfless sacrifice um, of of just honor and what is true and right and uh, change for the people. So um, perhaps this is my first time going out on an adventure <laughs> away from home. And I feel far too ashamed without my mask on because I grew up this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am I am looking for this famed dwarven rogue. Um, and I'm probably trans uh, uh, traveling to the ancestral lands, the the heavenly plains, to hopefully gain a clue on who this person may possibly be. <laughs> All right. Now for the la for the last one, since I know we're on a bit of a time crunch, um, I figure picking on you picking on you alone w is not exactly fair, so I may as well put myself under under the microscope. Okay. So I will I will handle the last one, and you c and feel fr feel free to sn feel free to snark at whatever comes out of my head on this one. <laughs> okay. The last time I did this ended up with ended up with the living meme of the great Draco, a nice <laughs> a dr a dr a um dragonborn warlock who is who every dr every other dragonborn is embarrassed by because he's because he is has a flair for the dramatic ah I'll, almost to the point <laughs> of Doctor Orpheus from Venture Brothers. If I can see that, <laughs> and insi insists that he in insists that he always be referred to as the Great Draco, it's like a, it is like a tribe called Quest or a pimp named Slickback. You say the whole thing. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Not part of it. Must be the whole thing. Otherwise, it's not right. Mm -hmm. so I figured, what's a good way to make a character memorable? Have them be have them be endearingly annoying. Yes. And as one of as one of the rules of combat states, if it's stupid but it works, it's not stupid. <laughs> Actually, I like that. Of course, the rules of combat also also list. Never draw fire. It irritates everyone around you. <laughs> and probably the most important advice, you are not Superman. <laughs> Although it, it also had, if you don't remember, the claymore is pointed toward you. And I've always, be, I've always believed that there's probably a Darwin Award somewhere of someone who put a claymore down the wrong way and ended up unaliving themselves. Just because I've seen old, I've seen old claymores where it says "front toward enemy." And oh man, <laughs> you know how ca you know how caution hot is put on is put in any hot drink. Yeah, but, I was just imagining that with like a fighting utensil, like uh, the, with the box like this way up, you know, kind of thing, like just in case. Yeah. For the record, the l I was thinking about what subclass that dru that druid would be, and the only thing that came to mind is Circle of Stars. I can see that, because the um, background that you drew for it, the uh, heavenly plane. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And which um, is not. My is not the most ideal subclass. It's ba it's basically for those who wanted to be arcana clerics, but d but couldn't admit it. It's <laughs> it's tier three. I'll gotcha, I'll, gotcha. I'll explain I'll explain what the tier system is in another day. Oh. so starting out, we have a warforged wizard. Oh man. <laughs> whose or whose origin is
a lord actually no no I it's see. gonna be good I I screwed <laughs> I screwed up that that's the background the origin is a palace. And we okay. have the mark of the mark of past. Is revenge. <laughs> and the impetus. The reason that they the reason that they went out that they went out adventuring is duty. The first bond is an ally and the se and the second the second bond is a former lover. Oh uh, no. So then we ha now to narrow things down. As far I'll st I'll start with the revenge part and the and go with the question of why. And the reason the reason why is shame. Oh no. So then we have the who questions for duty, ally, and former lover. So first is duty. That is a duty to a fey fighter. Which I sure ho I sure hope it's not a pixie knight or something like that. That'd be a t that'd be a that'd be a ter that'd be a terrible imagery. <laughs> the uh, with the back a fa a sorry a fa fighter who is a. Timekeeper A time a time key whose event is victory. And it, why do I get the idea that the Fey was like, I am the Time Lord? I don't know. Well, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> uh, the ally is a dr is a dragonborn artificer and the fo the f who is who has a background of a dragon and an event of Selfless sacrifice. Being a lot of selfless sacrifice recently. <laughs> the former, lo the former lover is Is a giant ranger. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's see. With a background of a mercenary and an event of. fall uh, 
Okay. Jeez, I really can pick them, can I? <laughs> they certainly come out interesting. Yes, they do. That's why I like. That's why I love this thing. So we have. So we have. So I would say. So sounds our, a little all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> our. Our wizard is is one is one named who go, who goes by the name Paradox. That okay. is that is not his his at his act, his actual name because he was he wasn't because he was a, he was originally. At one at one point in time, a hu a human. In fact, he was in fact he was a count, um, Count Steiner, who ca who was su was successful, if a bit decadent, and what and because of because of because of how he would flaunt his particular magical abilities, a rival wizard um, decided to trap his decided to trap his soul in. The in a um, blank bo in a blank warforged body, one that ha one that hadn't been active, one that hadn't been activated in centuries, as a private joke. Oh man! And he still maintain he still maintains his 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 abilities for wizardry, but a lot of a lot of the things that he enjo that he enjoyed. Namely, f namely things like namely things like the good old wine, women, and song, he can't. Oh, or buddy. He w even even with that he when he started when he started out adventuring he wanted to get revenge on the guy on the guy who put on who put him in who put him in that state. Only to realize that said w that the wizard who did this to him, by the time he found him, had been already dead for a hundred years. Don't you just hate that? Just miss them by a hundred years. It's it's it sucks, really. Yeah. <laughs> How, however, the, however, in the in that century, his own. His own former territory had be, had had um really had really gone had really gone to the shits, and even though he even though he doesn't have the title anymore because as far as anyone's concerned he's dead, he still he still feels honor bound to at least restore restore his homeland to its to what it once was. Um, largely because he ended up meeting a. F he ended up meeting a fa a a fay a fay woman of the un of the unseen win of the unseen winter court, who despite despite not ha despite focusing more on martial abilities, still managed to best him, and because of that and because of the, because of that he oh, he owes her any t if she ever needs a favor she is able to call on him. Especially, especially since, especially since that same that same Faye is someone who is someone who possesses the ability to manage time, i.e., has the possibility of sending him back, sending him back a hundred years. Ooh! But only only if he help only if he helps her with regarding the it's her regarding the long-standing pissing match in the Fey courts between the between the summer and win summer and winter factions and okay i should note that since this fey is technically an unseely um her body is invisible one could tell that one could tell that one could tell that it's a she, that's a she because because of the 
because of the appear because of the appearance, but no fit. But there's no face. Okay. If did you ever read the Invisible Man? I did. Yes. Yeah, think of, think of that. <laughs> I'm um, imagining that that's gotta be funny mm -hmm. to view in person. Yeah. However, the, however, the wizard did did make it has made a friend in a dra in a dragonborn artificer one who one who um whose pride and joy is the artificial arm that they, that that they ma that they made that they end up that they end up using because in order in order to save his, save his life when he tr when he tried to be a bit too reckless thinking uh, what 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 difference does it make I'm in, what the difference does it make I'm in a I'm in a mechanical body said Artificer mm -hmm. lost their arm. Ah. Uh. Dude. And the he has he has tried to find the village of his of his former lover a a um a a, a, sc a scout among the among the um, giant tr among among the giant tribes that was in his territory. Who, while he while he found her, she she is persona non grata within her village because she kind of sort of slaughtered thirty five people. Ouch. Well, ex lover now, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah. The this is the thing that makes things complicated is that there's a there's a bounty for about thirty five thousand gold pieces on the on her, on his former lover's head. Oh man, that's that's rough. We gotta explain to the new lover about your former lover and like your tie, and that's just gonna get messy by itself. I should note that I didn't plan on contributing to the whole um, tragedies thing with with this one. It just <laughs> it just sort of came out that way. Um, a lot of it, I will admit, I was channeling a bit of Terry Pratchett's unique sense of humor with certain things. Yeah. And the idea of a of a um, of a Wizard who's one st who's one step removed from Caligula levels of decadence, having to be humbled, is a good is a good arc to go with. Mm -hmm. um, plus, plus you can you can kind of make you can kind of make the a similar caliber of jokes to what Brooke makes in One Piece. Whenever he, whenever he makes some sort of gag about about how about say how cold it is, oh, wait, wait, yeah, you wait, you can't feel cold. You're a skeleton. <laughs> oh. Saying, uh, if if skeletons can't feel cold, then how do they chatter? You gotta be able to shiver. <laughs> yeah, and. I will note that whenever whenever I've handled Faye in a in a setting, I tend to go I tend to go with a rule that Faye do and say th do and act upon things that, if you're thinking logically, make absolutely no sense. Mm hmm It's not that the, it's not that they're dumb. It's that they're operating on a different kind of logic. So things that might be logical to us are completely incomprehensible to them, and vice versa. Oh, there's all. And the idea, the idea of a fae fighter would be interesting because I'm not sure. I'm not sure about you, but I've had I've had my fair share of experiences with people playing quote unquote standard fighters or treating the fighter as Babby's first class. Even mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. worse when they when they just when they pick their starting um, loadout and it's sword and board for the umpteenth time. Oh, 
and as, since I've t since I've touched on subclasses, I think with this one. Yeah, I was curious what you were gonna deem this one. All of that's going on. I would I would say. Lore master. I can see that. Okay. I was I was flip I was flipping between either either lore, either lore master or um or archivist. Hmm. Depends on how long he was a warforged. If if he was a warforged long enough, he could totally be an archivist. <laughs> A, a a theme that a theme that I'd go with with this character is that they have a lot of they have a lot of knowledge about that was that was common knowledge in their era. The th the approach I'm going with is that the time between his soul getting sucked out of his original body and his warforged body activating was mm -hmm. several centuries. So for all for all he when he woke up for all he knew it it only seconds had passed in reality about about 500 years had give he thinks when you're jumping around with when you're jumping around with time it's not exactly an exact science yeah 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 that's fair that's fair that's why uh, as an elf you know a century is like nothing so and Well, dra well, dragons have their own se have their own sense of time. That is not e that is not exactly what one would expect. Where again, sen again, centuries can be can can seem can seem like just yesterday. Um, yeah, yeah. Which as as an aside, as an aside when it comes to when it comes to races that are that are picked at that are that sort of immortal i'm always a little disappointed that there's never a mechanic to fall upon that you know it'd be a it'd be a really good way to re to bring back the bardic knowledge thing from 3rd edition ooh yeah i could see that with certain with certain races, with certain races, um, being able to being able to recall the not the knowledge that they've sequestered off. Because mm -hmm. whenever I've whenever I've there's I'm no stranger to playing immortal characters. I've I originally did it as part of a as part of a dare because a acquaintance of mine said that you can't that you can't do good role playing if there's no risk of death. Mm -hmm. And I I I responded with, I'll take th I'll take that challenge. <laughs> so yeah, he was this particular character was immortal, but it it was more it was less of the impossible to die, but more of the keeps coming back kind of thing. Ah, gotcha. He'll die, but he'll come back. He is the he is the type of person who would step on a landmine, explode, the parts would reform him, and then he'd yell about how much it how much that hurt. <laughs> that sounds funny. Mm -hmm. Which certainly certainly helps when you when you have when you have a really bad sense of humor. But <laughs> Of course, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to subclasses with um with the wizard, if I want if I I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that at at one point in un, in unearthed Arca in unearthed arcana, wizards was actively considering making the artificer a subclass of wizard, which, if you ask me, would have been a terrible idea. Mm hmm. Oh. Never. 
have to uh, explore a lot more of the subclasses to have more of an opinion on them. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. That one, that one, you'd have to dig wait. You'd have to dig like five. Like have to dig um, into Unearthed Arcana from like five years ago. Ah, um, uh, okay. But I think I think that version got reworked into the Ar archivist because. <sighs> Certain wizard players are ridi are ridiculously entitled. I mean, these are the same people who cr who cried poor when meta when meta magic became a sorcerer specific thing. Hmm. Oh. The on the only sub the only subclass that I re sometimes um certain subclasses that get that get introduced. I I end up being of the opinion that they should have been made into full should, full on classes instead of instead of trying to shoehorn them into into something else. For, yeah. With wizards, the big one is Blade Singer. Okay, I will have to look into that one. Actually, it sounds interesting just by the name. Blade Singer has been around for a while as a concept. The idea. The idea is is always been a wizard who does a little bit of sword play. In fact, it first sh it first showed up as a kit it for elf fighter mages in um AD and D. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Oh, but it's a it's one of the classic cases of attempting to do gish, but. The problem with so, the problem with so many archetypes that try to do Gish, except the except the war, except the blade packed warlock, is too much of one and not enough of the other. If if that make if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking it in my mind, like just. Yeah, no, I can I can see something like that being like a a very precarious balance almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I do I do remember house ruling a a version of the sword mage until some until somebody did a better job than I was, which kind of ha which kind of had the idea of give of giving. It's a of doing a doing a um spell a spell like effect when it comes to its when it comes to its attacks something not far removed from paladin's um smiting oh, okay yeah i can i could see something like that i mean their smite is pretty pretty heavy <laughs> if it hits just right well, i fig i figured that i figured it'd be a good way to kind to kind of get the cuz the per the person who the person who picks a gish is the kind of person who wants to go with the idea of they of this is someone who mixes magic and sword play or magic or magic and archery or or the like. Mm. Not somebody who can do who can do both but do them separately. Yeah, um, I can see I can see that. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that a built a. The times the times when multiclassing wasn't banned, I would always play um. Palerers. Sorcerer Paladins. <laughs> Since yeah, I can see that. Both of them use charisma as their as their casting as their um casting ability. So that just means more that just means more opportunity for smiting. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I loved it. My DM didn't. There are things I love as a player that I absolutely hate as a DM. <laughs> well, he should he should have known better because I've I had already developed a reputation of finding new ways to annoy him. <laughs> <laughs> because well, I think ev I think every DM has their sadistic side, mm. and. No, and knowing that every DM has that sadistic side gives me, am, gives me ammunition to prepare and counter it. The old, the old thing, the old thing of know your enemy and know yourself. 
Yeah, yeah. But I'd say that I'd say this particular experiment turned out pr turned out pretty well. Sounds like uh, you really wreaked havoc on his plans. <laughs> oh. Well, some somebody ha somebody has to. Somebody has to play the vi somebody has to play the villain. Right. Uh, but with that, but with that said, since given the time, given the time passed, uh, I would like to sincerely thank you for coming back to the temple to indulge me in this little experiment. Oh, my pleasure! Thanks for having me. It was very fun. Mm -hmm. And any time you see fit to return, of course, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>